I did a video not that long ago, uh, which you'll have seen on YouTube, and obviously it was part of the live stream. So if you watch the video and you're watching this live stream, it'll make sense. If you watch that live stream and you're watching this live stream, it'll make sense. And if you haven't seen it at all, you haven't watched either, didn't watch either, and you're watching now, I will give you a brief recap, as is my way. So, obviously, they had a disastrous campaign at the RMR. It was really, really bad, and they did the worst thing that you can do, both players and org. The worst thing you can do when you are playing shit is draw attention to yourselves by doing abnormal things or remarkable things so it became compounded because while they were losing games we had the device tweet i don't think there's any need for me to revisit that i think in retrospect we all know what's happened there ultimately device put out a tweet saying i'm not having fun playing boohoo my feelings while we were in the middle of the rmr the most important tournament in the current cs landscape where you would say focus probably important right fuck your fun let's talk about focus but anyway we now know obviously device is totally snaked blame f which is good he's in the right company with stown and yabby i mean astralis has always been a fucking viper's nest and now they've got the players i love that shit uh because device knew in that moment that in tweeting that essentially it was going to undermine his igl and his IGL was likely getting cut if they didn't qualify, and now we also know he was waiting in the wings to take over. Isn't life grand? It's convenient. They let you do it when you were a star player, and the funny thing is, as well as I've said, the community have been like, it's a bad idea, Device is going to be the IGL, but no one said, oh, Device snaked blame there. That was, like, really bad form. That tweet and then taking over his job, like, kind of ass. Just goes to show, you know, sacred cows and all that. So anyway, there was that part. Then, at the losing moment, they reneged to do an interview. I'm talking Blame F and Device. Astralis Management essentially said you can't talk to them. And they sent out their youngest member, their newest member, and the one that was performing the best in the form of Stare to do an interview. And this was widely viewed as repulsive. It looked garbage. It was a terrible thing to do. It's like, you know, think of like Liverpool losing a fucking Champions League final and Steven Gerrard shirks the interview and they send out the kid that they brought on with fucking five minutes before the end. It would be trash. It would look bad. There are responsibilities that come with leadership. There are responsibilities that come with stardom and you do not get to shirk them. So Astralis have reacted to this by, first of all, overhauling the team we've already done a video on that giving device the leadership role i think that's going to be a disaster everyone seems to think it's going to be a disaster i haven't heard anyone to the contrary other than that astralis have done the other thing they always do they've gone out into the media and they have told a slew of lies <laughs> lies because that's what astralis do Astralis keep lying in the press and they are provable and observable lies and nobody fucking says, ah, oh, Astralis are lying again. The journalists that publish the lies don't go, wait a minute, you're lying. So we're going to talk about that. And then the other thing they did is they are this insane self-aggrandizing machine, which is, as we'll get to, why the device in game leadership it's already a good thing guys it's already a good thing and it was it was all planned for even we knew we were going to end up here hmm interesting all right so i'll draw you to this uh to to the play.gg website astrala sports director after disaster rmr we have all failed in and around the sporting setup this was on the 6th of march about that exit interview a few minutes after it had become a fact that Astralis were not going to participate in the first Danish major in history, Victor Stair Stair appeared on PGL's live stream to do an interview about the failed qualification. Nobody remembers what the youngest member of the Astralis roster really said, but the fact that it was him and not the most experienced player on the team, Nikolai Device Reitzt, or the in-game leader, Benjamin Blame F. Bremer, that stood up for the team in the perhaps darkest hour of Astralis's history was shocking to the CS community. 
Was it a lack of leadership to not recognise the importance of doing the first interview after the disastrous match against Nine Pandas? And the answer is this. In an ideal world, I would have liked the interview to be done by one of the older or more experienced players, such as Device or Blame F. But when there is a guy coming into the room with a microphone asking to do an interview, and a young guy like Stair steps up to the plate and says, I will do that, I can only respect that. And I know he has earned a lot of respect from everyone in Astralis for doing that, says Kasper Straub. The speculation about if they one after another declined to do the interview and it ended up being stare because he was the last one is not how I have been told everything came down. It was a very young man who took a very, very big responsibility in a spontaneous act. At least that is what I have been told. I think it says an awful lot about Victor Stare Stare and nothing about the others. So, I am telling you 100% that is bullshit. That is not what happened at all. People who were at the event have told me and people who, and, and, in, and by the way, they even said this on the Talking Counter podcast episode about this. They specifically said, can we have Blaine? No. Estrella said no. Can we have Device? No. They specifically said you are not getting either of those people. That was said by whoever was handling them at the event. That is absolutely cast iron said by everybody at the event. And you have to understand that the talent know these things because obviously they're watching, they're hearing. These studios aren't like massive where you're in, you're in a totally different room from other people. You see the process. You sit there in a green room and you say, "Oh, I can't wait for what they uh, for what they're going to say. I can't wait to see this interview. Wonder what wonder how he's going to react." And you watch. You either watch on a monitor or you even just watch from the sidelines. I've, done, I've worked a few events. I know how it works. So no, Stair didn't go. Guys, I bet they're going to come in any second for an interview. Yeah, I've got this one. Yeah, I've totally got this one. Yeah, I love doing losers interviews. Me as a kid, I'll totally go out and do it. Yeah, that's not what happened. You have an obligation to do an exit interview as part of your fucking media commitments. And when the tournament asks you have to send someone and they didn't and device didn't want to do it for whatever reason or blame didn't want to do it obviously there was a whole fucking situation there astralis knew if they'd sent one of them out like how about this what if astralis didn't allow them to be interviewed because they were mitigating risk i.e blame f knew he was getting cut if they lost right and what might blame f say in an interview well what if he's pissed off what if he thinks he's been sold down the river? What if he thinks Device hasn't helped him? What if he wants to get one little subtle dig in before he... Well, Astralis can't have that, right? What if Device is in his feelings again and is like, oh, I just don't know what we're doing. The, it, and does a config, the playbook's just not good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So obviously, they ultimately said, no, nah, no blame Effer Rooney, no, no Device, and that's that. So that is obviously why those two people weren't doing the fucking interview. They go on to say down here, uh, Rugger could have made a difference. The decision to terminate the contract of head coach Castle uh, shortly before the end of 2023 and not have a replacement immediately lined up to be able to guide the team through the European RMR seems somewhat off and not what we usually expect from Astralis. The 23-year-old assistant coach, Ronick, was tasked with the job of trying to support the roster as much as he could on the server, while the sporting setup around the team also chipped in to try and prepare the team as much as possible. Without going into details about the potential candidates for the vacant job as uh, head coach for Astralis, Kasper Strauber revealed that it was, circ uh, it was a calculated risk they took where they decided to let Castle go. The expectation was certainly that we would have a coach in place for the RMR, but the calculation was also made at a time that there was also a scenario where we did not have a coach in place. It all came down to the fact that we thought, in any case, it was the best solution for the team to say goodbye to Castle. Directly asked, 
if it would have made a difference to have an experienced coach like Rugger with them at the RMR. Strauber answered, having Rugger with us in Romania could have made a difference to the RMR. If this was not the case, there is no chance we would have signed him. Nobody would hire a coach who would not make a difference at tournaments. Uh, so they also reveal here that what you're supposed to believe, all right, is Astralis are so bad at doing this that, they fired their current coach to take a calculated risk that they might not have a replacement at time for the RMR. I, I, I don't understand it. What's the calculated risk? Did you or did you not have people in mind? And what we know for a fact is that ultimately they ended up not sending a coach to the RMR when it would have been beneficial to do so. Now, there's probably reasons for this. If I wanted to speculate, could be that they maybe missed out on somebody that was on the market and Rugger wasn't the first choice. It seems impossible to me that actually their first choice, just they didn't get him in time. Perhaps maybe there was like, I don't know, someone who had coached Heroic that was out there and Maybe he was going to be available and they would have preferred him or, you know, whatever it might be. I don't know. But ultimately, for whatever reason, they ended up not sending a coach to the RMR. And they're telling you it was a calculated risk to do this. No, it was, it was fucking incompetence, mate. It's incompetence. If you agree having a coach would have helped them, why did you send them without an experienced coach to the event it's kind of like your job to make sure that's done right they go on and they say it's nothing to do with whether castle is a good or bad coach but an expression of the fact that we needed something else around the team and that we had an expectation that we could get a coach in much earlier than we have now done uh, Strauber explains before pointing out the key areas where he expects casper rugger do have more impact on the team as a coach it's more about setting some overall framework for how we want to play, making sure to implement the inputs that the players bring, and then, of course, making it fit together. It is one of the things I have seen as a strength in Rugger that he manages to set some structure and take the responsibility to ask the right questions and follow up on things in everyday life. It's definitely something we've been missing both in 2024, but also before. How far back before? Are we doing this thing again where... We have to pretend Zonic never coached at your organization. Looks like we are. Just for those that forget, this is an organization that when they brought Hunden in, against all logic and rhyme and reason, they sent Glaive out into the media to say, I've never had a better coaching and analyst team behind me than I do now. Now, listen, I'll forgive Glaive. You're part of the machine. You've got to do what the machine says. Or the fucking machine grinds you up and uses your bones to make its bread. I get it. But, I mean, does anyone believe for a fucking second that Hunden, and I think it was Castle as well, he was in, you know, because Hunden was technically the analyst. Do you think for a fucking second that that is better than the Glavesonic pairing? And so, this guy who just got here has obviously got his fucking... I, I, put it this way. They get a fucking hymn sheet... They get told what hymn sheet to read off as soon as you join Astralis. These are the things you got to say. It's better now. It's good that we don't have the fucking best coach ever to, to ever to coach the game. It's a good thing we don't have him anymore. It was, it was the best ever when Hundum was there, but now it's the best again. And what is he talking about? When would this guy, who's never worked with Rugger before, when would he have been able to make these observations? He says, it is one of the things I have seen as a strength in Rugger that he manages to set some structure and take the responsibility to ask the right questions and follow up on things in everyday life. But, but how many days has he worked at the org at this point? When did you see this, Casper? When? When? When did this happen? How do you know this? Were you, were you secretly at OG? Did I miss a meeting? What are you talking about? This is just utter bullshit. This is like actual bullshit. You have no capacity to observe how Rugger works. You don't know anything. Where it would have been good to watch Rugger work would have been at the fucking RMR he should have been hired for. 
but you didn't hire him because I suspect you wanted somebody else and then didn't get them. Or there was some contractual problems or something like that. Either way, that is a front office problem. And you're now, it's cost you millions. Or rather, you know, not one decision, but a series of bad decisions. I put it this way as well. You know, two million for Yabby and Stown, unproven in CS2 and playing bad. It's like, I don't know, you haven't just lost millions. You wasted millions before you lost millions. So, yeah, maybe that coach would have been a good idea, guys. Then, when speaking with Kasper Strauber, it becomes very clear that one of the problems on Astralis has been the roles on the team. Directly asked if the economy played a part in the benching of Blame F, Strauber unequivocally denied that the decision was made due to lack of finances. But more about roles on the team. I don't even know what the premise is there. I don't know why it would be lack of money, whatever. He said, you are absolutely correct that missing the majors is a significant setback. For us, it marks the third occurrence, emphasizing the challenging nature of the situation. The decision to part ways with Blame F and bring in Bro is not driven by financial incentives or constraints. Rather, it is solely based on our desire for roles to align and a unified philosophy in our approach. Strauber shared these insights during a call from the Astralis office in Copenhagen, where a couple of the many trophies that Astralis won in their glory days pop up in the background. Trophies that will remind the new team that is assembled for the first time this very day what Astralis's legacy in CSGO was and where, what Astralis wants, them, uh, wants for them in CS2. So this is part one. Right, so this is just garbage. This is just all garbage. But does anyone get to work for Astralis and not just be a shameless liar? I mean, it's like it's kind of like it must be an interview question at this point. This org has pretty much lied to the public consistently from its inception. It's actually staggering the amount of lies they have told. They were founded on a lie. Remember, they were a player-owned organization. And then it was the five players and Freddy Biscov, their original manager, had like 10% of the fucking equity between six of them, right? They were founded on a lie. And it's just this revolving door of just liars and hustlers and grifters. So right out the gate, don't believe any of that. Don't believe that, they, that actually Blame F was like getting out of his chair Ah, uh, fuck, this is going to be a rough one. But all right, boys, got to pay the piper on that one. Or device is like, listen, blame. I did do that silly tweet. I, it should probably be me. Uh, we'll wait and see if they ask. And the Astralis management will go in. It would be it would be good, actually, if you guys went and spoke to the community. No, don't believe that for a fucking second. Because what actually happened was they said no. You're not talking to either of them. It's too fucking volatile right now. They're not getting along dumb tweets terrible attitude and you know suffered because of the astralis management decision and by the way when are you players going to get it into your head when they are done with you they are done with you if they are going to speak ill of zonic they are done with you they are done with you that motherfucker delivered four fucking mages as a coach and they pretend he doesn't exist now when are you going to get it in your fucking head that they are dumb with you. Because you know who suffered for, for this particular lie? It's Blame F. Because everyone says he's a pussy. I've said he's a pussy. By the way, he should have fucking... He should have said, listen, you're cutting me anyway. I'm doing the interview. It's what I would have done. I would have gone out like a fucking G. But whatever. Blame F's rep has took a fucking massive hit because of their refusal to let them do the interview. And he's got to get another team. He'll never be an IGL again. Who's going to fucking take that on? So he's going to sit on the bench on a reduced salary for X amount of time. Zipnik's out the door as well this week after fucking eight years at the org. The last, keep in mind, because they signed him on that outrageous five-year contract, just sap in, in Astralis talent at the age of 28. Doesn't even get a game there. Yeah, you're a competently run org. Anyway, the second part. And this, <laughs> this is where if you're, if you're an Astralis fan, holy shit, I should have the number for the fucking Samaritans just scrolling across the bottom of this. Like, we, you know what I mean? There should be some sort of specific fucking hotline for you, much like the fucking JKS one. 
because look at this fucking headline in this interview and the content of it is worse. Casper Strauber. I know Device is extremely fond of Jane and all that he has done as an orping in-game leader. <laughs> Call 555. He's saving again if you want to talk to one of our specialised counsellors. That's 555. He's saving again. I mean, right, listen. Of all the fucking orping IGLs historically you would ever want to fucking emulate, why the fuck would it be Jane? Listen, I get it. Motherfucker won a major that nobody saw coming. Also happens to be one of the shittest majors of all time. That was excruciating to watch with a busted economy and where the preferential play style was anti-Counter-Strike. Fair dues. So he, he, he manufactured that, right? But let's also just point out a few little things. First of all, Jim rules that team with an iron fist and they've dropped players who, for some reason, couldn't work in a Jim team but have gone on to do well at others. They also had a literal bitch role in, in the team strategy. A bitch role where you just... Hey, Sanji, drop, you're on an SMG for the entire fucking game. That's not normal, mate. <laughs> that's very not normal sanji sorry mate you're on a p250 here drop drop me an up yeah like I, don't get me wrong it's cool if you can be that kind of player who eschews ego and you just go listen i don't give a fuck At the end of the day it's five names on a motherfucking trophy right that's fine like if you can be that guy most players can't be that guy and then some and by the way there's not having an ego and then there is just being used like that put it this way i'll say this the only other person i've ever well i've only seen like two other people ever reduced in this way one was dead fox right one one was dead fox and i guess to a lesser extent fox aka a live fox when he was ancient and he was in that fucked up g2 slash bears lineup and he was just a glock dropper right but the only other player I've seen have it ex as explicitly bad as Sanji was Loba for the two days he played in Imperial, where he was just, has he got an MP? Has he got an MP9 again? <laughs> like, and, right? So that's how bad it is. Not everybody's got the stomach for that, right? And 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 you probably shouldn't, honestly. Also, let's just compare. Right? I know Device is a disciplined orper, and he has a very specific style of orping, where he is a very good percentages player. Never gets carried away, never gets a rush of blood. In a word, if I had to describe his play style, I would say he's clinical. I think Device is a clinical orper. You're never going to see anything too flashy from him. Right? He's got good reaction time still, and he can hit flicks, obviously. He's a, an elite orper, what he does, right? But, uh, Vintage Kenny S, Vintage JW, Prime Guardian, uh, the list goes on. Flashier, more exciting to watch Orpers. Don't put up the numbers, don't put up the consistency. So, why the fuck would you want to be Jim? Because Jim ain't that. Jim ain't clinical. Jim, very often, is too passive. Jim puts himself in a position to not even be able to get the shot because he's too behind where the line of play ultimately is. And then he ends up saving. And even when he's got money in the bank, even if he can afford to die and just rebuy an op, he's still saving. He min-maxes like that. And it's not fun to watch. And Virtus Pro, they're not as bad as they were when they won the fucking major, but it's still pretty bad. It's still... In CS2, where you see these really one-sided games again. Remember, coming out of CSGO, it was all the rounds, snowballing impossible, endless overtimes, Inferno 16-14 every single time. We ended up with what we've got now, where a 13-5 is possible, right? And it's because we haven't tailored the economy 
and someone in the chat, first time chatter, so we're gonna we're gonna we always interact with them. The time you won a major was when he stopped doing that. Absolute bullshit. That's absolute bullshit. I watched every single game of that major, and I watched every single Virtus Pro map at that major and streamed it and had people reacting to it in real time. And the amount of times they saved where they were saving like in four V five rounds was excruciating to watch. So you are wrong. You are objectively wrong. Everyone in this chat that watched those games knows you are wrong. You, you, you can go back, pull up the fucking tape. He did not change his style. He's got a little bit better now. But the major he won, it was excruciating. In fact, remember that time? Remember that round? This was at Rio. So you'll be if you if you Google these parameters, my first time chatting friend, you'll find this. Right, there was a round where Jim made somebody drop an AWP for him. Somebody died immediately, and then he didn't even go to the bomb site because the person died so quickly from like a push off a spawn, and so he just didn't even attempt to use the AWP. He just had dropped for him in a force by round. He immediately saved it again in four v five. So. Put it this way, he did do that. He did that, and it was dog shit to watch. Does it work? I mean, the proof proof of the pudding's in the eating, right? He won a major doing that. But I never want to see that again. I never want to see that style of play rewarded with a world championship. No thanks. It's bad for the game. Anyway, we've had enough time to get over the headline. The curious case of Benjamin Blame F. Bramer, which they've done like the curious case of Benjamin Button, which I don't even understand what they're going for here on Play.gg. Are you implying that Blame F. is reverse aging? Is that what's going on? Weird. Uh, I don't just don't know. But anyway, they asked Casper Straube or Straub about yeah, he's reverse skilling. You're right. Uh, it says, uh, he, he answered the question saying, we have identified what we believe to be the reasons behind our team's underperformance. The realization that our Counter-Strike Foundation was not robust enough prompted us to seek a new in-game leader. Additionally, we felt Stown and Yabby should revert to their original roles, the ones they played at Heroic, where they naturally exert more influence and assume more central positions. Given these considerations, it became evident that certain adjustments were necessary. Upon concluding that Device both desires and is prepared to take on the captaincy, we were left with the task of determining who should assume the anchor position on the roster, acknowledging that resources will be allocated among the central roles on the team. And so Bro is brought in to be a support player. Yes, he will be a support player to allow Stown, Yabby, and Device to take on the roles where they can have the greatest impact. We have seen Stair make a big role change on the team, which he was han which he has handled superbly. He's been fantastic in doing a lot of the supportive roles. But on a modern-day Counter-Strike team, you need to have more than one to do that, and therefore, by definition, Bro will be a support player on the team. Wicked, right? Actually wicked. So... They brought in this guy, this player, who's obviously just excited because, you know, he was at Strahd's Talent and now he's in the big team. So they've just brought in a, 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 a basically a guy who it's okay if he fails. You know, he's the latest in a long line of talent that they've had on the roster that they just use. And they don't use correctly. And fuck your reputation. He's another buzz. He's another bubski. The list goes on and on and on. So he is the Sanji. <laughs> he doesn't know it yet, but he is the Sanji. And there's just lots to deconstruct from that statement as well. Why, if you needed support players to activate Stown and Yabby, why did you buy them? Oh, you mean it was more about ruining Heroic than it was about actually getting players who play in the roles you need? Oh, interesting. Why did you buy players that didn't fit what you needed? For two million. And so, uh, why don't you give Blame F a chance at being a more supportive player? He's an objectively good rifler. No, can't do that. So, Bro comes in. He's changing his role now to be a support player. And Stair is doing a lot of support plays. So, you need two support players to activate your $2 million acquisitions. How many more fucking excuses are we going to give these guys, by the way? So... 
Just to be clear, you spent $2 million on players you acknowledge don't fit. You've had to drop your IGL, give the leadership role to a p player who has never IGL'd before, who's also an AWPer, more on that later, and then you have brought back a player you had in talent that had just fr got free of Astralis' clutches, and you're bringing him back to be Sanji Mark II because Device admires Jane, and that's the predictive programming you're putting in these statements. Guys... Listen, all the bullshit aside, it looks like you don't know what you're doing. It looks like you haven't got a clue. The discussion to put Device into the position as in-game leader was a big surprise for most of the Counter-Strike community, who had guessed on various Danish in-game leaders as possibilities to take over from Blame F, all with the same playing style as a true team player who was ready to sacrifice themselves for the greater good in any round they demanded it. Casper answers, this is the direction that I believe many anticipated us heading in. However, I also believe there are examples of alternative approaches that can prove successful. I'd like to highlight Casper Cadian Muller for his tenure with Heroic. Perhaps I'm a bit biased, but I consider it some of the best looking CS ever played. If you turn back time to the good old Astralis era, there wasn't a designated sacrifice player, but rather individuals who were willing to make sacrifices when necessary. It is probably also more the philosophy that we are looking for. We want to create a team where everyone can take the place they need and everyone is willing to do it for each other. Cadian and Jame are two of the most successful AWPers who are also in-game leading at the same time. When asked about the latter, Kasper Strauber breaks out in a smile. If I remember correctly, Device is extremely fond of Jame and all that he has done as an AWPing in-game leader. I have no doubt that, that they also have some differences though. I don't think we should expect Astralis to become Astralis.pro. Yeah, imagine Astralis being fucking professional for five minutes. We must carve our own path. Kasper Straub emphasizes before putting full confidence behind the decision to let Nikolai Device Reed be the new in-game leader. There are no guarantees, but there are prerequisites. When I joined Astralis, I engaged in discussions with all the players, including Device. Naturally, I inquired about past experiences and his thoughts regarding the future, not just tomorrow, but in the months and years ahead. Already back then, he told me that he sees it as a natural thing he could become an in-game leader at one point or another. He lives and breathes CS, and he aspires to continue doing so far for as long as possible. He wants to do it where he wants to do it the most, and that's in Astralis. So let's start with this. I mean, first of all, right, the way he talks about Cadian. Uh, Cadian essentially made himself an IGL when he had been on the outs, he couldn't get games in Denmark. He'd been playing at Rogue. His career looked all but done. He even worked a desk or two and then got the opportunities that he got. And obviously, sometimes you have to change out of necessity. Kadeem was totally on the outs. He wasn't even a consideration. So he turned his shit around and became an IGL so he could do what he had to do. And then it just happened he was good at it because he's a smart guy. He's a good communicator. He also was given a team of relatively, like, at various points in Heroic, they weren't big names. They didn't have egos. He was the focal point of the team in media work. He did a really good job of being a lightning rod. Super underrated for that, in my opinion. And those players ultimately really let him down a lot by being choke artists. So, not really an apples-to-apples apples comparison there. Then, uh, I'll I'll go on to the next part, where he says, Oh, and me and Device have been talking about this. Come on, this motherfucker only just joined. So, he's got, like, this insane relationship with Device already. And he's like, yeah, well, as soon as I got here, we were talking about, like, the future. And Device said, yeah, I'm going to be an in-game leader one day. I'll translate this because it's Astralis lies. So, I'll try and I know their lies. I'm very fluent in them, as you can see. And I've been correcting them publicly and translating them into this thing I call the truth for a long time. So I will do it again here. What he means is, Device was mega fucking tilted off the face of the earth about Blame F. And said privately, secretly, when Casper got there, I think I should take over as the in-game leader. Because I can't be arsed with Blame anymore. And Casper said, listen, if we don't qualify in the major, we'll cut Blame F and you can have your turn. And Device said, good. 
That there you go. That's it in plain, truthful English, and not a strawless babble. Now, there's a couple more points uh, on this that I didn't really have chance to get into, because I was kind of like live reacting. It was on the same day that device was announced as the IGL. I did the Astralis stream. And listen, can anyone solve this little riddle for me, this little conundrum, right? So, device is sad because he's not having fun, right? And there's no fun in the game. And they're losing, and that's not fun. So, if I wanted to have fun... Yeah, right this is just psychology one of the ways you can start having fun is to do things you do enjoy and to absolve yourself of responsibilities and you know take a break have a holiday chill out so to be clear device thinks it's going to be more fun as an in-game leader weird because i can tell you it's not fun i know a lot of igels talk to a lot of igels down the fucking years and it's probably the least fun you can have in a team you're very often the sacrifice doesn't work in this setup uh you very often have to give up your positions to make everyone else happy because a happy ship is an efficient ship you have to convince players on an almost daily basis to believe in your vision you have to come up with a playbook a strap book you have to remember that playbook and strap book and call it at the start of rounds and then when rounds break down you have to tactically induce uh, tactically like deduce what the best move is next and call an audible and you're doing all of that while you have to play the game and you, your eyes aren't even really on your screen a lot of the time the more on your fucking mini map because you're trying to think about positioning and placement in case comms aren't particularly efficient and good and you're not getting enough information in to spit enough tactics out there's a reason by the way why orping and igling is very rare or star rifling and igling is very rare it's no secret that in-game leaders are very often weaker players through either a combination of to have the requisite skills you have to be a little bit older a little bit more mature a little bit better educated, whatever it might be. Yeah, and also you have to have a bit of an a bit of experience, so you can lead younger players and have an aura about you that they look up to and respect. So obviously their stats are bad, but also the mere act of being the in-game leader very often reduces your stats because there are limitations on the on the brain and. Put it this way, there is a star player, flamboyant player, big number player, big flashy play player to IGL pipeline, and it ain't pretty because their stats don't hold up. You can go with Existence, you can go with Apex, Nitro, uh, Adren, Electronic. If you cannot put out big numbers in a role that you need to put out big numbers... It's a problem. And he's just said there, Casper Straub has just said, like, Device is getting the resources. So they're bringing in a support player to give up space and resources to their IGL. A lot of pressure, mate. Oh, what's that thing Device historically doesn't cope well with? Oh, it's pressure. All right, my bad. Well, yeah, this, this won't be a total fucking disaster. And yeah, you've all typed it in the chat as I said it. You kinder, look no further. Motherfucker was on top of the world. A lethal, unplayable entry fragger. And then, and, and, and by the way, really well liked. And there he was, doing all the interviews, doing all the media work, turning up in show games. I even remarked, this kid gets it. He's got a bright future ahead of him. The problem is, in life, when you start believing your own bullshit, and then guess what? He got gassed up too much, started believing his own bullshit. And A, they think anyone's fucking good over there. I mean, compared to the players that do ply their trade, they probably thought this guy was it. He's dynastic. We're gonna fucking, you know, this is it. We're gonna win. A, we're gonna win a major. If we listen to this guy. Bring him in. Make him IGL. He plays bad, but that's all right. Because now we're gonna listen to him. Sign his mates and players he individually rates. Spoiler: players for some reason have a blind spot to spotting other good players. It's so ridiculous. Their levels of bias. It's very rare that a player actually can pick a good player to play with in their teams. Never let them do fucking recruitment. 
right? Rule. That's just uh, take that from me. Take that to the fucking bank. For the one in a hundred times they actually do get it right, there's ninety nine times they get it wrong, and it's fucking miserable. So anyway, they let your kindar fucking pick the team, and then he brought in a bunch of shit players. And now he's left in a crisis of confidence, being cut off at the knees, no longer an IGL, can't entry frag, can't frag, can't play, doesn't fit in a liquid, and is destined careering at great speed towards a fucking bench. And we all see it. So trust me, Deva, careful what you fucking wish for. And careful how you play your cards. Because... Put it this way, I, I watched um, I watched Hot Take Point Made today or yesterday, and then I've been fucking all over the place. But anyway, uh, in it, they they say they don't think Device is ever going to be a top 20 player ever again. And it's wild to think that that could be the case, and it's wild to think he's going to take on all this extra responsibility. You know what would have worked for Device? Bringing in an IGL that's really good with AWPers. Bringing in an IGL that could have freed him, let him play with a bit more freedom, let him do a bit more what he wants to do because he's able to get the pieces on the board in the right places so they can excel. But they haven't done that. They've made the guy who needs the resources, the guy allocating the resources. Won't be That won't be a problem. Don't worry about it. We've got a Sanji player now. He's called Bro. Drop up for Dever. Astralis, man.